Success with color in the garden is all about seeing. In everyday life, we're surrounded by color. According to experts, we can recognize 10 million or more different colors. We look at colors all the time, but we really don't see them. We're like computers. We process information, make lists, add up quantities and apply labels. We look at colors and identify them. We say, oh yes, that's red. But what kind of red? Is it a pure primary red? Is it an orangey red with a little bit of yellow in it? Or is it a bluish red? Small differences like these determine whether we see colors as warm or cool and whether they will go together or clash. Except for the three primary colors, pure red, pure yellow, and pure blue, all 99 million other colors are mixtures. Knowing what colors go into these mixtures helps us to understand colors and their family relationships. For this purpose, there is the color wheel. It was designed in 1776 by British engraver Moses Harris. He developed this circular diagram to show how the colors of the rainbow are related to each other. The sequence of hues, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, made sense to him as an artist. Mixed together, red and yellow make orange. Thus, he put orange between its parents. Green belonged between yellow and blue, because yellow and blue make green. And violet took its place between blue and red. Working your way around the wheel, notice how red shades gradually into orange, and orange into yellow. In the natural world, there are dozens of different orange hues, far too many to fit on any color wheel. But if you compare any orange to the color wheel, you will get an idea of where it belongs. There are only two ways to use color in the garden, contrast and harmony. All orange hues are harmonious together. Having two colors in common, red and yellow, makes them similar. And similarity produces soothing harmony. Difference results in contrast. Colors that lie opposite each other on the color wheel, such as red and green, yellow and violet, blue and orange, are called complementary colors. They are as different as colors can get. Placed next to each other, they produce the boldest contrast. Contrast attracts attention and creates excitement. In nature, each color has many variations. So the gardener's color wheel shows as many as possible. You will find the pure intense colors around the outside edge. Tints are on the inside. Tints are colors reduced in strength by the addition of white, which makes them lighter. The opposite side again shows the pure strong colors around the edge. The inner rings illustrate tones and shades. Tones are colors reduced in intensity by the addition of gray, and shades are dark colors made by adding black. This orchid cactus illustrates full strength red, which can be found on the outside edge of the gardener's color wheel. The pink dogwood blossoms are a tint of red. Look for tints on the front of the wheel. These foliage plants offer muted red tones, which you will find on the back of the wheel. And the daylilies provide a dark shade of red, also found on the back of the color wheel. The next few examples show you warm reds and warm pinks. Both lean toward orange. Orange is a warm color. As a rule, try to keep warm reds and warm pinks with other warm colors. Cool reds and cool pinks contain a touch of blue. They go best with other cool colors. This Monet painting illustrates a harmony of cool pinks and cool blue violets. What does red do? In this painting, it commands attention. It works the same way in the garden. Red and its opposite, complementary green, are highly contrasting.
and therefore attention getting. In the geranium and the zinnia, you can see a family resemblance between red and orange. Orange is half red and half yellow. But there are many different orange hues. Some have more red, some have more yellow. All the orange hues go well together and with their parents, red and yellow. While red and yellow are very different from each other, orange can bring them together harmoniously. Nature uses orange to harmonize red and yellow in the fall landscape. It also works in a container scheme and ties together the red and yellow in this garden. Blue is opposite orange on the color wheel and creates contrast. Orange and yellow are the lightest, brightest colors in the spectrum. They are cheerful, carrying colors that show up from a distance. There is no cool version of orange because it's made from two warm colors. Yellow, however, has both cool and warm versions. The black-eyed Susan contains just a hint of red, which makes it a warm, slightly orangey yellow. The daylily is pure yellow. Warm yellows go best with other warm colors, like this warm pink. Cool yellows that contain a hint of green go best with cool colors, like blue or blue-violet. Nature puts all the yellows together successfully. So does the designer of this fabric. White works well with yellow because both are very light, bright colors. This terrace planting uses the same color scheme. And in this spring garden, green provides dark contrast. Yellow, even more than red, is an eye catcher because it is so light. Your eye goes straight to the bullseye of yellow flowers set off by the contrasting green hedge. Chartreuse is the lightest, brightest of all the yellow greens. Yellow and blue make green, a cool, soothing color. But chartreuse contains much more yellow than blue and therefore attracts more than its fair share of attention. Nature prefers yellow greens that contain more blue and therefore are not as light and bright. This garden is a sampler of greens. All the greens are harmonious together. Green goes with every color and can act as a peacekeeper between clashing colors. Green offers great variety too. Yellow green is warm for a green. Blue green is the cool version. These subtle differences make this knot garden interesting. Wherever there is enough rain, green is nature's choice for the natural landscape. Nature uses it to set off bright flowers and to provide a dark, handsome background for colorful wildflowers. Green serves the same purposes in the garden as a background and foreground to show other colors off to their advantage and as the perfect partner in a white garden. Green can also stand alone. Many gardeners find enough variation in green to create an entire garden. The huge expanse of the sky is blue. Oceans are blue. And yet the color blue is otherwise rare in nature. Gardeners crave this color. But true blues are hard to use in a mixed flower bed because they make other blues containing red look dingy. Blue is at its best with cool yellows, greens, and whites. For perennial borders, there are delphiniums. For containers, a volvulus Hawaiian blue eyes. For the spring garden, forget-me-nots. Compared to the forget-me-nots, this Siberian iris is obviously not true blue. Like most garden flowers described as blue, it is blue-violet. In other words, it contains a tiny bit of red. But the good news is that blue-violet is a beautiful, versatile color in the garden and easier to use than pure blue. Blue-violet goes with many other flower colors, especially tints and shades of pink. All members of the violet family are harmonious together. They run the gamut from almost blue to pure violet to violet hues containing increasing amounts of red. 
The reddest is the color we call magenta. It is a moot point whether magenta belongs to the violet family or to the red family. White may be colorless or achromatic to scientists, but in the garden it is a force to be reckoned with. White is stronger, lighter, and brighter than any color in the rainbow. It is worth noting, however, that some gray foliage, like the lamb's ears in the foreground, runs white a close second in brightness. Large white flowers are the most eye-catching. Small white flowers can more easily be assimilated into the garden. There are also warm whites and cool whites. The outside petals of the peony are a cool white, the center a warm white. Warm whites are not quite as startlingly light and bright as cool whites. But on the whole, the best use of white in quantity is in an all-white garden. With the gardener's color wheel as your guide, explore the gardener's palette. From warm reds to red-orange and golden orange, cheerful yellows to yellow-greens, pure greens and blue-greens, beautiful blue to versatile violets, and to complete the circle back to red again. With the help of the gardener's color wheel, you will learn to see colors. That's what it's all about. So give the color wheel a whirl and have fun creating your garden.